Chiwa to jump center against Josh Carlton, and we are underway. Houston only went seven players deep in their win, and there's a quick three from Javon Green. Green had a nice tournament in Hawaii. Here's the Houston starting five. Shed Moore Edwards back in after missing last game with an injury. Carlton and Fabian White Jr. It's a very different looking Houston club because of major injuries, but they still rebound and attack you physically as Fabian White did there. Well, they get the second chance and throw it away, but keep an eye on the offensive rebounds in this game. Cougars got one there. It's something they do very well as we look at the USF starting five. Green with the three early. Jake Boggs, Caleb Murphy, Jameer Chaplin, and Russell Chiwa. The Bulls without Byron Matos in this game because of COVID protocols. Green again. How about that? The transfer from James Madison is cashed in two threes in a row. Hey, you're talking about the best three-point shooter on a USF team that's really not shooting the three well. He now has 19 out of the year, and Houston gave him a lot of space to get the, both those threes off. Bulls only 23% as a team from behind the arc this season. Again, the offensive boards. Carlton can't get it to go, but Houston another chance, and the jumper is good by Kyler Edwards. Well, if Houston is going to play volleyball in the glass, it's going to be a tough game for USF. Again, I think they need to be close to even on the glass by the end of the night to have a chance. We've played 90 seconds, and Houston has five offensive rebounds. Russell Chiwa, first touch, draws the double team, gets pinned in the corner, fortunate to get rid of it. Open look for Boggs. How about that? USF opens three for three from behind the arc. And this is a team that's one of the worst, percentage-wise, one of the worst teams in the country, not only the conference, but in the country in shooting the three. Yet they've gotten open looks and they've knocked them down. They only had 49 three-pointers as a team on the season coming into tonight's game. Shed with an open look. And Chiwa grabs the rebound. That's where Houston's going to struggle a little bit from the perimeter, missing some key players due to injury. They have lost two for the rest of the year. And they are guys they will really miss, Tramon Mark and Marcus Sasser. You're talking about two of their top three scores. Boggs puts it on the floor. And the Cougars strong on the boards again. They're one of the more physical teams in the country, and they do it, Jim, without fouling, which is very difficult. Fabian White can't connect. And that may be a foul as Chiwa goes down hard after some contact. Kelvin Sampson has coached more than 1,000 games at the college level, closing in on 700 wins. What a great job he has done with this Houston program. You look at the last five years, they're second in the entire country in terms of wins. The only team that's won more than them is Gonzaga, and that gives you an idea of what kind of program Kelvin Sampson has added to a program with such a rich history prior to him under Guy Lewis. Final four last year, lost to the eventual champion, Baylor. High post for Chiwa, now Boggs. That one off, but Chaplin the offensive rebound. Jameer Chaplin for two. Well, there's the first answer on the other end in terms of getting points in second chance opportunities. Each team now with one bucket. Really, that's where USF needs to stay even. Nine-point Bulls lead early on. Fabian White and Chaplin clears that board. We mentioned Houston played only seven in their win over Temple. Boggs is open, but left it short. They'll go deeper than that tonight, most likely, because Kyler Edwards is back and in the starting lineup. Great look inside, and Carlton with the easy two. Yeah, Carlton's a guy who's very good at sealing his man on the block, and once he makes that catch, he's going to finish. 
turnover in that game. And they're doing it while a little short-handed, right, Jim? Aliza Pinzon unable to go in that one, the Bulls' point guard. So we'll keep an eye on that as we progress here tonight in Tampa. Edwards gets cut off on the baseline. It will go back to Houston. Edwards missed nearly two weeks of action with the bad ankle as we get a look at Brian Gregory, who's got to be pleased with what uh, he sees so far. And really a great chance for them because Houston still is a shorthanded team, even getting Kyler Edwards back. Brian Gregory received a contract extension that was announced yesterday. Here is Carlton, and he has drawn the foul. So Carlton, the UConn transfer, will have an opportunity from the free throw line. Chaplin was trying to help, but he kind of slapped down on the arm there when he was helping on the weak side. You see the numbers on Carlton so far this year, 52% from the free throw line. We mentioned Houston playing only seven against Temple as DJ Patrick replaces Chaplin. After that game, Kelvin Sampson was effusive in his praise for his team. He preaches the next man up mentality, and his team went out and did exactly that against Temple. He called it their best win of the year. Which is saying something, um, because they've had a lot of good wins during the course of this year out of conference. To this point, they had to play four players at least 37 minutes. We'll see if that affects them today. DJ Patrick short with the three. The Bulls cooling down a little bit from long range after hitting their first three. Edwards trailing the play. And the scramble is going to result in a held ball that will go to Houston. Both coaches got to be happy with that, though, when you have that many players on the floor going after the loose ball. And as I said at the top, you have to match the physicality and the aggressiveness of Houston. And you can see Brian Gregory clapping after that because I think he, he felt that his team did exactly that. You're going to have to win loose balls on the floor. You're going to have to get tie-ups. And you're going to have to play well without fouling at times. Again, Carlton working on Boggs, and he got around him in good shape. Nice job by Carlton. That is a mismatch from a physicality standpoint. Patrick to the basket. Watch this nice move by Carlton. He not only has a size advantage, but he's got a weight advantage, and he really does a great job with his feet. That's how he was able to score against Boggs there. Really good drop step. Foul is on Ramon Walker, the freshman guard, who was one of the heroes of Houston's win over Temple. Patrick hits the first free throw. It really was his three that kind of sealed the deal in Philadelphia for, for the Cougars. Walker, an interesting story, playing in just his fourth game of the year against Temple because of hand injuries. And he did a great job for them, helping seal that win on the road. They were talking about redshirting him until the injuries to Marcus Sasser and Tremont Mark. Wound up with 13 points in that game. And a foul on the rebound, and this one may go on the Cougars, and they have gotten Fabian White. White's really become one of the leaders for Houston with the injuries to Sasser and Mark. In fact, he's been a little more vocal, and he had 15 points and 14 rebounds at Temple, so he stepped up his game on both ends. White's one of the great veterans on this team. He's playing in his 126th game tonight. Has been a part of 101 victories. He's one of only three Houston Cougars to eclipse the 100 win mark in his career. Boggs can't finish. And the Bulls come up empty again. That's a great find by Chua to split the double team. White's turnaround no good. Houston working hard to get the ball in the paint. But unable to come away with points. This is Trey Moss replacing Murphy. He's stripped, knocked away by Tajay Moore. 
second turnover of the game for USF, and the entry pass saved along the baseline. Really good job by White to do so. Now Houston will have a chance to reset. White from the corner. That's a part of his game that is new this year. Fabian White, 36% from behind the arc, and that's a big part of his improvement and this his graduate year. Yeah, he went from a back to the basket player who now is almost like a stretch four where you have to defend him wherever he goes. Green had the quick six early going to the basket and the whistles blow. And we'll see which way this is going. They're gonna get Green with the offensive foul. I wasn't sure if Walker was outside the cylinder. Uh, that's tight. I don't even know if he was there early enough. I think Green has a little bit of a beef. His first personal. Houston back to within one. The Bulls raced out to an early lead at 11 to two. Jamal Shedd played all 40 minutes against Temple. Finds Edwards in the corner. And again, the work on the offensive boards by Houston. That's Reggie Cheney, senior out of Tulsa, with his first points, and that gives the Cougars the lead. And to this point, Houston is winning the game on the glass. Sam Hines Jr. turns it over after the double team in the paint. Shed the other way, knocked away by Murphy, and the whistles blow. Yeah, I think he got part of the arm, too. So Murphy picks up his first foul. This Houston team has only two losses on the season, and they're both the nationally ranked teams, Wisconsin, number 23, and Alabama, number 15. And not only were they losses to ranked teams, they were losses by a combined three points. And both on the road. An idea of this Houston team what they can accomplish, but it's going to be a little bit of a different road for them without Sasser and Mark. It will, and they're still, you know, even with the guys who are filling in, not a great free throw shooting team, just over 65%. One out of two for Shed. And the Houston lead is two. Conference opener for the Bulls. They didn't get to play their last non-conference game against Mississippi Valley State. And they didn't get to play their conference opener against East Carolina. Last time they played Christmas night in Hawaii. Murphy forced into a tough shot. Nice defense by Shedd. Again, that's it. Tough defense without fouling. They force you into awkward off-balance shots. D.J. Patrick, the rebound. Bulls open three of three from the floor, one of eight since then. Houston has really tightened up the defense. McCreary to the back. They use their defense at times to create offense. Yeah, South Florida would love a game in the 50s if they can get one tonight. McCreary trying to complete the three-point play. And that puts USF back up one. He can be an X factor, I think, off the bench for USF. He has had moments where he has played really well since transferring in from South Carolina, but hasn't quite yet had that complete game off the bench. Jamal Shedd draws the double team. Nice ball movement. Shedd open from three. And Hines, a nice job to block out on that, and the Bulls get the rebound. Much better job in terms of defensive rotation there, and I think also forcing Shed to take the shot rather than Walker, who I think is a better three-point shooter. Houston has out-rebounded the Bulls 14 to eight, seven of the boards for Houston on the offensive end. Here's Sorrell Smith, first touch for him. Trying to go through traffic, and the hand check, I think, is going to go on Shed. That'll be his first. But for them to pick up five fouls in ten minutes is a story. They did a good job throughout that Temple game, playing with just seven players, really, other than Josh Carlton not getting anyone in foul trouble. And neither one of these teams foul very much. 
considering how aggressive they are defensively. Chaplin with a three. That has been a shot that has been missing this year for Chaplin. Only 13% from three, but he looked good there. And the Bulls have four three-pointers on the night. Jim, you're not kidding. That's his first three made since November the 24th. He had missed 15 straight before that. That's a bonus for USF. And Chaplin unable to pull down the rebound. Bulls pull it off the floor. And Hines has it knocked away, but a whistle. It'll be a foul on Houston. Hey, you look at the, deep, the rotation and the extra pass, and then a nice screen by Hines to free up Chaplin, who for a guy who hasn't made it lately, looked very comfortable on that jumper. Six to nothing run for South Florida over the last 90 seconds. USF for the season averages four threes made per game. They have four already halfway through the first half. Smith trying to add to that, but leaves it a little short. Chaplin goes to the hoop and draws the foul. This will be on Jawan Roberts. That's the seventh team foul already on Houston up in Cincinnati. We mentioned the USF women playing without their point guard. Well, they're doing okay. 23 to four. At the end of the first quarter in Cincinnati, Bulls on a 10 to nothing run over the last three minutes of that game. We'll keep you updated as that one progresses. <laughs> Chaplin hits the first one, came in at 70% from the line, and that's a real improvement for him. He's been getting steadily better from the free throw line. And he's known more as a defender than anything else. I mean, he's almost at a season average if he can hit this free throw. That is a bonus for the Bulls. Looking for his seventh point. And after Houston took the lead briefly, the Bulls have rebuilt this lead. They've scored the last seven and they've done it in different ways. Shed with the penetration. Jamal Shed, averaging a little under 10 per game. With the injuries to Sasser and Mark, he really has to find ways to score in addition to distributing. Cheney yanks down the rebound for the Cougars. And a whistle away from the ball, and that's going to be called on Houston. They're going to get Fabian White. You get a look at the beautiful move to the bucket and the, the ability to power his way to the goal and finish. Really good balance by Jamal Shedd. He's averaging more than six assists per game, but he's lost one of the guys he'd like to distribute it to in Fabian White Jr., who now has two personals. And they're going to keep White on the floor with the two fouls. So let's see if South Florida goes after him or not. Chiwa has re-entered. Bulls running out of time here with six to shoot. Not normally she was range on the floor, but the shot clock was counting down, and shots are falling for South Florida tonight. And that was a confident take, too. Chaplin upset with that call, but he's going to get the foul. Checking the game for the Bulls. I mean, Chiwa is in a spot where that's not, the one dribble got him a little bit of space, but that's probably a shot, no, 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 yes, 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 from the USF bench. Bulls played three He's games in Hawaii. In game two, they played the University of Hawaii, and that game kind of looks like this one so far and that the shots were falling for USF. They ultimately won that one 76 to 69, their best offensive game of the year. Josh Carlton off the nice feed, and Houston draws a little closer. Hey, the Cougars right now are the team that can score in the paint better than USF. Green got his defender airborne and draws the foul. That's going to be on Edwards, and Green got the worst of that collision. First foul on Edwards and already the ninth team foul on Houston with more than eight minutes left in the half. Well, the one thing they're doing differently from the Temple matchup, though, where they had only seven players, Jim, is they have played eight to this point, and the fouls are fairly well distributed. In fact, everybody has at least one 
And Fabian White Jr. has the two. He's the only player with two fouls to this point. Javon Green to the free throw line. Ryan Gregory was a happy guy at practice this week. He was just glad to get his team back on the floor. They had a much longer break last year, more than 30 days. And fortunately, this one didn't last quite as long this season. But it's tough to be out two weeks. It is. I think the one difference, though, between this year and last year is they still had the ability to practice because they were not in COVID protocols. It was the opposition. Great hustling play. Ajay Moore to keep that play and save the possession for Houston. Perhaps it's given them fresh legs. But they did go home to Houston and then came into Tampa yesterday. Which is a little surprising because they are on break. And they had so many guys play so many minutes, so they not only had to do that, but then travel. Green into the paint. Boy, the Bulls finding it tough going in the in the paint in this first half. Murphy stops and pops. Great hustle by Chaplin, but he can't get the follow. And he's fortunate, too. He didn't pick up a third foul there on the reach. Acrobatic play. Jamal Shedd is starting to heat up. He's got seven. Well, he also recognizes that Caleb Murphy has two fouls, too, and he was able to blow right by him. And not a lot of fouls for the Bulls as a team, but they're not distributed very well. As Murphy hits the jumper. Murphy with two fouls and Chaplin with two, so they're going to have to be careful as this first half winds down. Kind of curious how Brian Gregory is going to use both of them and his bench the last six minutes and change. Going inside, it's Carlton off the glass. He's had a big first half. That gives him 10. Yeah, he really has been a man in the paint so far in the first half, and there's not really a good one-on-one -on -one matchup for USF against him if he is able to make the catch in the paint. And remember, the Bulls down one of their post players in this game. Byron Matos unavailable. Green has to retrieve it, and now the shot clock becoming an issue. By aggressive defense by Houston. Bulls running out of time. And that'll be a shot clock violation. Houston basketball. I don't think I don't think Connor Green realized he probably still had a couple of or Javon Green had a couple of seconds still to be able to create a shot there before that heave. Fourth USF turnover. And now the Cougars looking for the lead. Right back inside again. Now Boggs, and he'll pick up a foul. So Boggs trying to deal with Carlton that time. Bulls foul number five, Jake Boggs. That's his first. I first think, on Boggs. I think one thing that Houston does really well is identify matchups and create space. And they have been able to create space for Carlton on the block, allow him to operate and make those catches without any other offensive players in his way either. So he's got the ability to maneuver. Carlton 10 points and six boards in this first half. And he puts the Cougars up one. Carlton's really come on too. He's averaging 13 a game the last eight. Here's Green, had the fast start, has been quiet since then. Chiwa, nice looking jump hook off the feed from Chaplin. Really good job of the pick and roll by Chiwa and Chaplin. And Chiwa establishing good mid post position. Three is good by Fabian White. That's his second of the game. Again, this is where Houston creates matchup problems because they've got a four who can step out, create some space, allowing the five to operate down low and pin someone on the block. Houston by two as we approach the five-minute mark. And the foul called on the Cougars. This should be free throws for South Florida. Well, that's a third on Fabian White. They kept him on the floor, and that's going to hurt. So White picks up his third. We'll see if Kelvin Javon Sampson Green makes a change or not. Looks like he's getting Jawan Roberts ready. Ah! 
And that will be it, presumably, for the first half for Fabian White, Jr. That is a major loss because with Marcus Sasser and Tremont Mark out, White has become really their leader on the floor. He's been much more vocal. He's been an extremely good offensive rebounder, too. Green ties it up with his eighth point. And with Roberts, they're not going to be able to stretch the floor. You don't have to guard him as honestly on the perimeter. Edwards back in. Missed the last game with the ankle injury. Another good entry pass, and the Bulls just have no answer for Josh Carlton. See, Chiwa jumped out there to double team, and when he did that, it allowed Carlton to create the matchup that he wanted against Boggs one-on-one. -on -one. Probably would have been better to just sag off and, and allow the perimeter player to try and shake loose at the three-point line. Chaplin's jumper no good. And Roberts the rebound. And Shed with the penetration. And you can see just how explosive this Houston team is as they get the lead up to four. They've got players who are hard to guard, and they create matchups that are difficult. And the foul trouble in issue, too, because Murphy doesn't want to pick up the third, and Shed has exploited that the last handful of trips down the floor. Boggs passes up the three. Chaplin. Ryan Gregory avoiding further foul trouble, at least so far. That said, these are an important final four minutes, not only for them to stay out of foul trouble, to stay close to Houston, but also to stay close in terms of the points in the game. Strong first half for Chaplin, nine points, four boards. Here's Edwards. Murphy trying to track it down in the corner. It will be touched last by Houston. Nice job by Murphy to kind of use the sideline almost as an extra defender. And I'm kind of surprised that Houston playing with limited players has gone to man-to-man -man the whole game. They've played almost zone exclusively against Temple, which is very unlike them. You would think with USF struggling shooting the ball this year that they might be more prone to go to a zone. There's a nice look inside, and Sam Hines Jr. scores for the Bulls his first points. Those are points you're not expecting, too. It was a really good cut to basket and excellent use of the left hand to finish. Shed kicks it to the corner. This is Tajay Moore, now Edwards. And over Chaplin, he hits the three. And looks like there may have been a foul away from the ball there. I think they're getting out right after the basket. And that was a little bit of a hard stopper for the Bulls because that was Chaplin defending the shot. And you heard the whistle, thought that might be going against Chaplin. Instead, it does go against Houston, but the three is good. Bulls get Murphy out now for the last 240. Trey Moss in the game. Chiwa leaves the jump hook short. And the Cougars on the attack again with a three-point lead. I think that's a probably a, a, not a bad shot, the jump hook, but probably not in a position on the floor where Brian Gregory wants him to take it. Whistles blow, and this will be a foul on USF, either Green or Moss, I would think. And it'll be Moss. And Moss called for the reach. Shed could have been called for a little bit of a reach around on the baseline. He got too. the hook, didn't he, with yep. his arm? I'm guessing the reach came before the hook, but he definitely used that arm as a wrap. So still not in the bonus. It'll be an out-of-bounds play for the Cougars. Carlton goes up and gets it. And he'll have a chance to add to his impressive scoring total from the free throw line. That's going to be Chiwa. What's been most impressive about Josh Carlton, and look, he's a guy who, who knows this league well. He played four years at UConn before transferring for his grad season at Houston. Is how well he uses his feet on the block. His footwork is excellent, and he knows his strengths. Averages a little under 10 per game, and he's already got 14 tonight. McCreary re-enters as you see Chiwa getting a rest. 
And another offensive board for Houston. This is a critical juncture here for USF. Trying not to let this get away from them. How about the block by Chaplin? Boy, dangerously close to that third foul, too. The three from the corner is good for Green. And South Florida back to within one. What that, an important sequence for USF. That's almost like a five-point swing. And if it was Chaplin's third foul, too, it would have really hurt USF, not only for the rest of the half, but in the second half, too. Three threes for Green. He's got 11. Shed looking inside again. Stops and pops over Moss, and the tap is up and good by Carlton. What a dominating first half for Josh Carlton. He just basically, with his backside, moved McCreary out of the way and said, I've got this one. Away from the ball, an offensive foul. That's going to be McCreary with an illegal screen. It'll be Houston basketball. This was the big sequence that really is allowing USF to stay in the game here at the end of the first half. The quick push gets Green the open look after Chapman created with the defense. So a three-point Houston lead. And you want to keep this within two possessions if you're USF. Houston with a chance again to kind of pull it out a bit. Great entry pass and same story. Josh Carlton hits again. A mismatch that they just can't find an answer for, or at least giving different looks, whether you want, I mean, you're not going to front the post, but maybe you go a little bit of zone. Here's Moss. Now McCreary. Houston kind of played off him, and McCreary took advantage. Done a nice job offensively in the first half with a handful of points, giving them a little bit of a spark off the bench. Here there's, you have to double. There's that man again, Carlton, and the Bulls do try to double him up. Edwards dishes off and tra quick jumper by Edwards. And that's going to be South Florida basketball, and they'll have the chance to play for the final shot of the first half with the shot clock turned off. You know, with the players on the floor, I would anticipate they create some sort of isolation off the dribble and then try and find a kick out for either Green or McCreary. Moss working the clock a little bit, but the Bulls need to put this in motion pretty quick here. Nice catch on a tough pass by McCreary. Picking up a fourth is going to be critical. And for USF, the foul trouble is Murphy and Chaplin, two of their primary ball handlers with two apiece. All of those players are on the court to start the second half. Javon Green, a big part of the Bulls' offense, hitting from three in the first half. Now Boggs. Five to shoot. Green saw it, couldn't finish, and neither could Chiwa. Bulls lose a good opportunity. Yeah, I thought Green created a really good look on the curl, and then White on the other end able to finish. Terrific look inside, and Fabian White hits. Five-point Houston lead. Can't rest for a moment against the team that's as good as Houston. And you have to finish at the rim. That's two bunnies that USF has missed coming out of the break. This time it's Chaplin coming out empty. Edwards thought about the three, but inside it goes again, and Carlton adds to his point total. He's got 20. He's tied his season high now a minute into the second half, and if he's going to have the ball from four feet away, he's going to score at will. Great start to the second half for Houston. They've expanded the lead to seven. Murphy. Caleb Murphy has four on the game. Uh -oh. USF has gotten what it's wanted the first few trips down the floor. They've had three layups. The problem is they've made one. Now they have to find a way to keep Carlton away from the basket. A lot of screen to screener action to allow him to create some space and, and operate usually by himself on one block. White to the basket, and they're going to get Boggs on the foul. That will be his second. Bulls foul number five, 
It'll be a non-shooting foul out of bounds play for the Cougars. Cougars number 12 in the AP poll, number 14 in the coaches. And look at that move. Over the top goes Carlton for two more. And that's the most he's had in a Houston uniform, and he was able to do it because of that really sharp inbound play to allow him to operate again on the block. Tough rim for the Bulls in the second half. Murphy had that one halfway down. And Carlton again. He's 10 of 14 from the floor, 24 points for Josh Carlton. And even though they don't have a single steal, they're still winning by a nine-point margin because they're getting the ball where they want to offensively. And again, the big story, Josh Carlton, one rebound away from a double-double, 24 points, nine boards. Javon Green, Bulls looking for a shot here. Murphy through traffic, and he will draw the foul. That's going to go on Shed, and that will be his second. It'll be an out of bounds play for the Bulls here. USF has gotten good shots in the second half. Not much has fallen. That three is short, but there's the offensive board. Jameer Chaplin in double figures with 11. And really, from the moment he made his first three-point shot, he's shown a different level of confidence on the floor tonight. He's been active on both ends. Pretty good numbers for Chaplin. 11 points, five rebounds, four assists. Boy, look at Tajay Moore glide in for the rebound. And Chaplin cleans the boards for USF. Bulls haven't had much in transition this game, and Edwards denies Murphy there. Carlton again. Uh, if the big man's going to run the floor, you reward him, and that's what Edwards did right there. Yeah, nice vision by Edwards there. He had a man in the corner, but took the short route and picks up the assist. Off the ball, a foul called. That'll be on Houston. And not only look at the push Edwards with his head up the entire time, sees the big fella right in front of him, and the easy finish. Jamal Shedd got that foul a moment ago, and that's his third. That is somewhat newsworthy because he is the point guard. He played all 40 minutes against Temple. He'll be replaced by Walker. Chaplin an open three, too strong. Bulls now five out of ten from behind the arc. Chaplin hustling but can't keep that one in play. Now remember, they made their first three, so they are now, what, two for eight or two for seven since. Edwards will inbound here. Carlton out away from the basket. The Bulls love to see him there, but it leads to a three from Edwards. Tyler Edwards, 35% behind the arc. The fact that you have to honor Carlton on the pick and roll allows Edwards the space to just rise up and take that three. Biggest lead of the game for the Cougars at 12 points. Chaplin. Carlton made him change it. Is what it is, and Houston showing why they're the ranked team in the American tonight. No word yet if that USF East Carolina game will be made up and when that might happen. Schedule makers will have their work cut out for them this year, as they did last year. Boy, terrific defense there by Kyler Edwards. They get the takeaway. And a foul coming up the court on Chaplin, so that will be his third. And I think really just a frustration foul more than anything else. Just because of how good the defense was for Houston on that trip. They force you to go into areas of the floor and to do things off the dribble that you do not want to do. Bulls have missed their last four shots. This was a three-point game at halftime, but the Cougars have played really well so far second half. 
Carlton again, this time McCreary on him and some help from Hines with a block, but a foul. And there really wasn't anything done down low to allow Carlton to create space other than the fact that they isolated and allowed him time on the block and basically just rotated the ball until he found himself in position. And then boom, he's got the ball four feet from the basket again. They got McCreary on the foul. Carlton now 27 and 10 for his double-double. His career high was 21 coming into tonight. We still have 15 minutes to play. He could end up with 40. Got both of them there, and Houston has now built a 14-point lead. It speaks to Kelvin Sampson talking about the whole next man up theory. Edwards and Green got tangled up, and they're going to get a foul Houston on Edwards. That will be his second. Well, you said it earlier, Neil. This is probably not the style of game that USF wanted to play with almost 15 minutes to go at 55 to 41. It's tough because they've had such a tough time scoring this year. Eventually, they need a game. It's more in that 50, 60 range, even though Houston is short-handed. They're just so athletic with the players they do have on the floor. As again, defense there creating another chance to get the basketball back. It'll be a held ball as Hines is blocked, and it will go to the Cougars. A lot of red jerseys in the paint as Houston just converged on Hines. And for the most part, they do a really good job. Now, they've had 15 fouls tonight, which is high for them, but generally they defend without fouling. Inside again, it goes. Carlton. Carlton is blocked out of there by Hines. And a held ball on the rebound, and that will go to South Florida. Probably one of the few times he's made a mistake, and when I say a mistake, he brings the ball down after he gets the offensive rebound. Again, he has the easy chance. Wait for the guy to go by. Hines with the late help, able to get something, and then he brought the ball down, and Green able to get that tie up. Bulls trying to find some offense. Murphy loses the handle, and it is touched last by Houston. It'll go back to South Florida. The Kyler Edwards is like, how? I didn't touch it, but USF gets... For them, probably a much needed break. They need baskets in a hurry. For them, 14 points, a 14 point deficit in 14 minutes is a wide chasm against this group. Foul called. This will be on the Cougars as well. That's going to be on Edwards again, so he's now got three. You've got Edwards, Shed, and Fabian White all with three fouls at this point, but you have a 14 point lead, so you can afford to go to your bench. Edwards and Carlton will sit down. One other thing that Houston has done really well in this game, Neil, is protect the basketball, given that their two players out for the season with injury are both guards that handle the ball a lot. They've only got two turnovers. How about that from Javon Green? Well, he's clearly the best three-point shooter the U.S. have has. And he's done a nice job to create some space. And, and maybe we're seeing a little bit of zone here for the first time for USF. We'll try and take away Carlton. Fourth three-pointer for Green. He leads USF with 14. Fabian White has returned, and he has it knocked away by Hines, but he's going to get whistled for the foul. Look at Green create space here and get the shot. Might have used a little push off with the off arm to get it, but no call. That's his first team sport. And a nice crossover step back. Fabian White Jr. Fabian White Jr. to the free throw line. White had 15 points, 14 rebounds in the win over Temple earlier in the week. We said at one point one of the weaknesses for Houston is their free throw shooting. They came in at just over 65%, and tonight they're now 11 out of 14. Back to 12 for the Cougars. Green thought about launching again. Why not? He's four out of seven behind the arc.
Baseline jumper McCreary. And the rebound by Ramon Walker Jr. White threw three bulls to drop it in. Bigs are running the floor better for Houston than USF, and they're getting points in transition from their big men. Green's off with that three, and the rebound pulled down by White. This is a little too fast a pace, I think, for USF to be able to keep up with. Jamal Shedd kicks it out. Gets the return pass, Shed from the corner, and McCreary the rebound. And you don't want to walk it up down 15 with 13 minutes to go, but at the same time, you can't play that quick a pace. Murphy trying to get the Bulls in the half-court offense here. Now Chaplin. Double team, he dishes off, and McCreary off the glass. Nice job by Chaplin to distribute. Their overall athletic program. They lead this one by 13 midway through the second half. Bulls trying to extend the defense a little bit, and they almost get rewarded, but Houston able to grab it back. When you have chances like that on 50-50 balls, to get back in against Houston, you have to convert. And Edwards makes them pay. He's heating up in the second half. Kyler Edwards with 10. It's almost like a second chance point. I mean, instead of going down on a turnover, you're looking at the other team converting. Murphy taking a little time here with the shot clock down to 10. DJ Patrick has re-entered, but he's short with a three. Other than Green, they haven't been able to find a second consistent three-point threat on six the USF side. And, six out of 14 now behind the arc after that three for three start. Nice play defensively. Green gets the block on the three. Murphy stops and pops. Hines keeps it alive, and McCreary is foul. Should be a two-shot foul. A nice job to stay with it for USF. They're going to need to find a way to be really efficient on the offensive end against good Houston team. Cheney gets the foul. McCreary to the free throw line. Seven points, four boards for him on the night. And... We talked a little bit about him, Neil. His numbers aren't huge in terms of points and rebounds, but he's always active when he comes in the game, always makes something happen, usually something positive. But he, was, he, he scored, what, eight against Florida? That was his biggest game offensively. That was right before the trip to Hawaii. So he's starting to round, I think, into form where maybe he can become a third scorer with Murphy and Green. That's his eighth point of this game as he gets one of two. Houston has shown tonight you know, why they are a ranked team and why they've been able to overcome injuries. They just have so much balance. They have recruited well. They have a lot of depth, and they are as prepared as any team can be to have these kind of injuries and still play at a very high level. That's knocked away, and Moore saves it. It's a USF turnover. Houston has the ball back. And they value the basketball better than almost any team in the country. Only three turnovers tonight, a plus four on that end. Seventh turnover of the night for the Bulls. Edwards launches, and that one hit the end line. That'll be South Florida basketball. Remember, they are currently playing without Shed, without Carlton. It looks like Jamal Shedd is coming back in and without Fabian White. Jamal Shedd checks they can afford to give them some bench time because they've got this 14-point cushion. If it gets close, they can bring those guys back. Good to see Shedd re-enter after he was dinged up before the break. And now a little zone for the first time for Houston. And the Bulls need to get a run together here. Three-point deficit at halftime, but Houston has been up double digits most of the second half. The 
Nice mid-range jumper by McCreary, and now he's in double figures. Good spacing by USF. Nice job by McCreary to get that ball mid-post. That's usually a spot that's open against the 2-3. The encouraging thing for South Florida in this game is the shooting. They're still 43% from three. They're 38% from the floor. That'll be off the leg of Sorrell Smith. Not great numbers, Neil, but given how USF has struggled offensively and how good Houston is defensively, not bad. Hey, it's tightening up a little bit in Cincinnati. The women's team leading by 11. They are into the fourth quarter there. A little over seven minutes left in that game, we're told. So we'll watch that one down to the wire as the USF women try to win their conference opener on the road tonight. Jamal Shedd, two more for him. He's got 11. All of the Houston players offensively seem to go to their strengths. You don't see them take shots that are ones that they can't make. All high percentage. Shed in that 15-foot area. Sorrell Smith looking for some space. His jumper short. Hines the offensive board, but then can't keep his footing. Knocked away by Murphy. It glanced off the hands of Moore, and that'll be South Florida basketball. Really the first mistake by Houston in the transition game. They've been so efficient when they've gotten numbers. And just their fourth turnover of this game. And going to his own does two things against USF. One, it forces them perhaps to do a little more perimeter work than they would like. And two, it forces them to slow down offensively a little bit and buy some time for Houston to get its legs since they only go eight deep. Smith short with the three, and Houston not allowing many second chances for the Bulls. Edwards jumper. Boy, he has been on target in the second half. That's his third three. Too many guys for Houston that are hard to guard, and that's where you basketball tonight. They've got 17, now 18 assists on their 25 makes. And again, two of their very best players, Marcus Sasser and Tremont Mark, out for the season with injuries going down at almost the same time. That's a crushing blow for a lot of teams, if not physically, then psychologically. And Houston just hasn't missed a beat since that happened. You're talking about two of their top three scorers, two of the top players in the American. I mean, Sasser's an All-American type player, one of the better players in the country. And they've been able to weather the storm. And, and not only that, they're playing extremely well. It's like they haven't missed a beat. Caleb Murphy will go to the free throw line. The foul was on Shed, and he now has four. Murphy will get one more. They'll get Shed out of the game. Ramon Walker Jr. back in. Nice job on the boards by Roberts with the block out and the rebound. The points have been much harder to come by this half. Just 13 in 13 minutes for USF. And Houston, meanwhile, scored inside early, outside late. Another three. That's Tajay Moore. This is all coming with Carlton on the bench. He's been out for a while after piling up 28 points. Shows you just how deep Houston is and talented. They've now got six three-pointers on the night. Chaplin from the corner, and Jameer Chaplin, that's his second three of the night. He's got 14. I think one of the real bright spots for Brian Gregory tonight has been the play of Jameer Chaplin. This is probably the best game he has played in total this season. Pulls back to within 16. Inside it goes, Cheney. Moore with the left hand and the offensive board for the Cougars. Boy, they make you work so hard on defense, and then you've got to defend for another 30 or 20 seconds when they get another offensive board. Cheney draws the foul and hits the shot. That'll be on Boggs, his third, 
and a chance for a three-point play. They get you in a chase game constantly. They reverse the ball extremely well, and what's impressed me tonight is how well their bigs finish around the rim. Real strong physically. Play through contact. You see Russell Chiwa checking in as Cheney will shoot one here. And they're shooting 50% from the field, and they're only 6 of 19 from 3, which means they're making more than 60% of their two-point shots. And they're also a plus 13 now in rebounds in this game. And a plus 22 in the paint. That's really the difference in an 18-point game. Green kicks it inside to Boggs. And the Bulls able to recover. Boggs steps back for a three. And that will go back to South Florida. They'll reset the shot clock to 20. Chaplin did a really nice job to keep that ball alive and allow USF to get it back. Again, he's had the most complete game for the Bulls this evening. Time not on the Bulls' side here, trailing by 18. Two in a row on the road next for USF. Bog scoops up the rebound, but can't get the follow. He's had a tough time finishing. What's that? He hit his first shot. He hasn't made one since. He's missed his last seven. Hit the three early as the Bulls came out of the gates at full speed, taking an 11-2 lead to start this game. That's going to be a turnover for Houston. Edwards stepped out of bounds in the corner. The numbers on Kelvin Sampson. Final four last year. And that's pretty remarkable. Yeah, they definitely win the games they expect to win. And that's nearly a 500 winning percentage against the ranked teams, which is very hard to do. Green through traffic, can't get the bounce, but he'll draw free throws. He also has had a pretty good ball game overall. Foul on Roberts, his third. Green will get a couple of free throws. Graduate transfer, first year with South Florida. One of the Bulls' best free throw shooters, over 80%. And gets the roll there to make him four out of five tonight. Yeah, I think Brian Gregory just saw him a moment ago. He's He probably had to like the way his team played in the first half. But I think the ability to finish at the rim, stick to the game plan, and play a full 40 minutes is what he's trying to find with a, a group that's still trying to get some chemistry. Three is short. And Chaplin still working hard for South Florida. Green's three won't go, and surprised Chiwa perhaps didn't get a foul for coming over the top, but they call it a held ball, and it will go to Houston. Possession error in Houston. And good effort by USF, but again, it seems like 50-50 balls against Houston end up either in tie-ups or they end up in the hands of the Cougars. They do the little things as well as they do the big things. And again, in USF's defense, first game in 14 days. They had expected to play a late December game against Mississippi Valley State. That one was called off. Then they had their opener January 2nd against East Carolina. That one was called off. Flora now after a couple of minutes of rest, and that is a career high for him, 28 points. A couple, I think he thought sat for 10. They were able to buy him all that time. From the corner, Chaplin's three is short. I'm actually kind of surprised he's back in there at this point in the 16-point game. Bulls have now missed their last six shots. 
shed out there with four personals. Now Edwards, and there's Carlton, and he'll have a chance from the free throw line. See if they got Chiwa or Chaplin Ball's on this. Think it's Chiwa. Only the second on Chiwa, and Carlton will go to the free throw line. Maybe somebody on the bench realized he was two points shy at 30. Could be. They've got such a short bench, though, too, with the injuries, even with Edwards back. There's 30, 52% free throw shooter, but he's 8 out of 10 tonight. Yeah, he hasn't looked like a 52% free throw shooter tonight, that's for sure. Three minutes to go. Murphy just deadly from inside the arc. That's his best spot on the floor. At that time, able to create a little bit of space on the interior of that zone, which has been tough for USF to solve the second half. Well, certainly good news for Houston that Kyler Edwards has been able to play so many minutes tonight and played very well after missing the last game with an ankle injury. He tacks on two more there, now has 15. At 10 of them this half, he also is taking advantage of some space. Murphy coming back the other way, back-to-back -back hoops for him. I think, though, when the game was tight, he had a tough time creating some space against Houston. Their defense was a little bit too much. Carlton again. Speaking of too much. Yeah, he will get a couple more free throws. It's like they'll get McCreary on that, and that will be his third. That's his third foul, team seven. They've tried every single player that they have or that they've used as a post against them. They've had no answer. Yeah, you wonder how Byron Matos might have fared against him. Matos, a big body that has been getting a lot of minutes inside the paint for USF, unavailable for tonight. But everybody that the Bulls have thrown at Carlton has not been enough. Trey Moss in the game now. Chaplin to the basket. He's got 16, his best offensive game of the season for the Bulls. And he's done it on both ends, too. He's got five assists. He's got seven rebounds. Foul coming up court. That'll be on Moss. Really has had a complete game. Well, you look at this game for South Florida, Neil, and they've probably shot the ball a little bit better than they have much of the season. I think offensively they've done some good things, especially given the opposition, but Houston just has too many weapons right now. Yeah, and, and I think they've shown that with the ability to score, what, 75 points with a minute and change to go in this ball game. You know, this is a USF team that was giving up fewer than 60 per contest. And they did it in different ways. They did it in the half court. They did it by pushing. They did it with the three-point shot. And they've done it at the foul line, which is not their strength. Houston came in averaging 78 points per game, and they're getting close to their average. They've done a nice job getting to the free throw line as well, 15 out of 21. Shed breaks that one up. It'll go back to South Florida. And they continue. Look, they've got a 16-point lead, a comfortable advantage, and Shed is still challenging passes here in the final minute and 42 seconds, and that speaks to Houston's culture. They concede nothing. Their next game will be at home after opening their conference schedule with two in a row on the road. D.J. Patrick leaves it short. McCreary with the putback. He's kind of had a nose around the basket tonight. 12 for him. That's the most he's had in a USF uniform. 
This game was a 40 point plus margin last year between these two teams. Much better showing for the Bulls, but Houston looking very much like a top 15 team. Too many weapons in Fabian White Jr. Again, he had foul trouble early. He hasn't picked up a single foul this half, and he's been dominant on the offensive end. He's got 15 on the game. Bulls will inbound. Houston getting some of the starters out. The two big guys, Carlton and White, depart. Between those two, 45 points in this game. And Houston, which used just seven players in its last game, able to unload the final th three players on the bench. They'll end up playing 11. Ryan Elvin in the game, guarding Moss. Five to shoot for the Bulls, and they get helped out with a foul on Tajay Moore. This is a final now in Cincinnati, so the USF women's team opens their conference schedule with a victory. 61 to 46, the final over the Bearcats. When you consider they were playing without their starting point guard and you win by double digits on the road, I would imagine Jose Fernandez has to be pretty pleased with that, especially the start they got off to. They gave up, what, four points in the first quarter. Defending conference champions. Off to a 1 0 start. Sorrell Smith with a couple of free throws. Also in the game for Houston now, Javier Francis wearing number five and Robbie Armbruster wearing number two. And right to the basket, Tajay Moore with emphasis. He is maybe the best athlete for Houston, and he shut off his hops right there. Shot clock turned off. Armbruster takes it away, and Patrick forced a foul with nine seconds to go. And you can see how much the bench was looking for Armbruster to take it coast to coast. So the foul on USF, and Armbruster will get a couple of free throws. He's a freshman out of Atlanta. He's attempted six free throws this year, and he hasn't hit one yet. One more coming. You can see the bench is like, come on, make one. Looking for his first point of the night. There it is. Robbie Armbrester. Final seconds of this one. Smith, and he draws the foul. Boy, he got Jawan Roberts airborne. And Sorrell Smith will probably feel that one tomorrow. But how does that speak just to the identity of who Houston is? A, a team that plays great defense all the time. They challenge everything. They concede nothing. It's an 18-point game with two seconds left, and I think that speaks to what Kelvin Sampson has established. Smith will get one more. Houston will go to 13 and 2. South Florida will be 5 and 8, the next two on the road. The Houston Cougars. 